ready? Yep. <coughs> Three, two, one. <coughs> I didn't get it wrong. Okay, so we've not coughed up enough, but all right. Um, here we find ourselves for Poe Tarts number eight from the files, 21st of April 2012. And joining us here today is Sebastian Goldstein, who is a Sydney-based artist and also arts administrator. Um, and in 2011, he opened Alaska Projects in an abandoned mechanics office in the basement of King's Cross Car Park. Uh, since opening six months ago, Alaska has received over 5,000 visitors and was nominated for an FBI SMAC Smack Award in the category of Remix the City. Um, Alaska Projects is one of the many projects that Sebastian has been part of, but this is an ongoing and we certainly delve into Alaska. But Sebastian was an artist, um, was awarded at Fraser Street Residency and has shown at Gather Gallery, Kudos Gallery, Fraser Street Studios, as well as Gallery 8, and internationally at Good Children Gallery in New Orleans in the United States. Sebastian was asked to speak as part of the Creative Cities Lecture Series of Australia's most influential image makers uh, last year. And he regularly contributes to panels as speaker, most recently as part of the uh, SMAG panel, and that's the management industry body. Thinking outside the white cube, which is quite apt if we think of Alaska. Now, as an administrator, Sebastian's worked for various organisations, which include the Biennale of Sydney, uh, the MCA, MONA, and his current position as producer of Art Hunt City. And we're just sort of um, still on the tail of the fringes of that finishing. Sebastian, how are you? Very well. Uh, good afternoon, Angela. Well, it's fantastic to have you here because there is a lot to explore about your work. But perhaps let's start with your own work because your own work sort of explores pop culture. Um, it sort of also explores sort of urban, cityscape, and Gorilla-type things. Tell us about the work. Yeah, well, um, basically, uh, I, I'm, I'm someone that, you know, I kind of struggle with, with classifying myself as, as an artist. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm someone who's always been interested in art since I was uh, uh, young and in some ways always kind of practiced art. Um, I guess um, most recently, sort of in the last five years or so, I started uh, turning my hand to um, kind of a street-based pra practice. So. Um, Really, um, really sort of focusing around advertising manipulation. Um, so basically, um, what what I kind of got into doing was um, particularly um, bus shelter ads, um, looking at the, the kind of um, uh, mass advertising, the, you know, the ubiquitous kind of mass advertising that we find around ourselves, and and using kind of humour or or even just like kind of graphic uh, interventions to uh, to sort of play with those ads and kind of reposition those ads. And um, yeah, so I uh, basically um, started um, sort of text-based. Um, I used uh, hand-cut uh, vinyl pieces of like contact that could be probably a super interesting. And I would hand-cut uh, letters to match fonts of ads and uh, ad words or subtract words and, and sort of generally manipulate the meaning of uh, advertising. Um, it was kind of great. It was all, uh, you know, on like, all uh, at night, so it was a, a really kind of interesting practice because I, I would do whatever I would do in the day and then, you know, kind of get excited for the night time and, and be out um, all hours of the night. I'm an insomniac, so it kind of, it kind of fits. And, uh, um, and an insomniac in King's Cross. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's a kind of culture jamming in a way, yes. what you were doing, um, because it's both temporary, but it's communicating a specific message but not necessarily always with a specific mission of politics or something that's more substantial. Um, and that kind of, I guess, um, was a trail towards Alaska projects. Um, now, there must have been a bit of process involved to be allowed to actually uh, put your work up. Yeah. Uh, such as in the sense of mm, graffiti, uh, advertising. 
Uh, tell us a little bit more of the process of how you um, wish about that. Yeah, I mean, I, I think a lot of this, um, a lot of this kind of stems from, um, you know, I grew up in, in Sydney um, and kind of heavily immersed in the punk scene um, in the late kind of 80s, early 90s, and um, very much, you know, um, the, the kind of DIY aesthetic of that, of that kind of scene that was basically just sort of people getting together, putting on shows, um, making zines, making flyers, um, you know, using their work photocopier to make a, you know, a zine or a poster for a show. And um, the one great thing about that scene was that it kind of taught you really young that if you wanted to do something, um, you should just go away there and do it. And, and you know, um, money is great, but you can do things without money. And, and definitely, like my um, my practice, you know, I've got friends that are amazing kind of oil painters and you know, sort of installation artists, and um, their practice is super kind of expensive. But my practice is really, um, you know, like um, contact that I get from. Um, uh, a $2 shop, uh, cheap acrylic paint, um, you know, really, really kind of accessible. And also, too, um, in terms of space, like a lot of artists I know make work, but, you know, maybe it's sort of sitting in their studio and they, they sort of have to get the, uh, the opportunity to exhibit, whereas I never had to, to wait for that opportunity. It was really just on me, you know, whenever, whenever I saw an opportunity, like saw an ad that I wanted to um, play with, I could just go and play with it and have to sort of ask anyone about that and um, strangely I, you know, I've, I've come from a background of um, writing as well too. I was a script writer and also a, a, an advertising copywriter and um, the interesting thing about that is that you're kind of using the principles of advertising against yeah. advertising. Yeah. There is a kind of strange juxtaposition there but let's think about the consideration of how you perhaps sell this kind of contemporary work and how that sort of sits within a celebrity and uh, sustainability as artists. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, it, it really is, it really is kind of um, uh, ephemeral uh, work. So yeah, it, it's, it's not really, um, it's not really geared to selling, it's more just about um, uh, expression and, and, and um, yeah, definitely no kind of uh, commercial return. But um, the, through the process of doing that work, that sort of also inspired the open uh, space, which is kind of weird because my practice is all about the absence of an exhibition space, and um, um, then you know, then be kind of inspired to open an exhibition space. And for me, um, for me, that that had a lot to do with my friends and uh, my friends who are artists and that kind of struggles that they had to um, um, to sustain, you know, uh, the life of being an artist. Um, one thing that I found really difficult. Uh, was um, you know really talented, particularly say painters, really talented painters who would have um, shows coming out the galleries and having to pay gallery fees and marketing costs and opening night costs, and it affecting their work. Like they're showing me beautiful like sketches of, of paintings that they wanted to do for their shows, but literally not being able to afford the canvas and the stretches and the oils to uh, to realise that work. So sort of being held back by that. You know, when we set up Alaska, um, one thing that we were really keen on is, is, is um, you know, it's an artist run initiative and, and, and you know, project space, so it's a place for artists to um, kind of explore and, um, and uh, create works um, in an environment where it's not going to cost them, um, you know, they don't have to make those kind of choices based on money, more just on, on creativity. And, and, um, and I think, you know, the shows that we've had have seen the benefit of that because people are very freed by that For someone like yourself who comes from uh, a kind of structured administration background, and that much sort of working with um, Edward Lippi and I was sitting in the MCA and Mona, etc., you're quite familiar with the arts industry and structural aspects. Yeah. How, how important to you is sort of putting across all the grounds groups um, space? It's weird. Um, yeah, so for me, um, you know, coming from those kind of massive institutions, the, the one thing that, that is great about working in, in those institutions is that you get really good kind of processes in place and you get, um, you know, a really good idea about uh, dealing with artists and, and dealing with sort of procedure and things like that. So we kind of, we kind of take um, those procedures and that kind of thinking but just have it on a, a smaller kind of scale. Um, so it's an interesting thing coming from from you know the most kind of structured environment to a seemingly unstructured environment, but um, you know in order for the space to run, 
you know, in, in our first year of operations, we'll do um, 16 shows at the space um, and five off, show, uh, off site shows. So it's 21 shows in a year, which is requires a lot of a lot of administration, a lot of kind of organisation, coordination, and they're the skills that I, I guess as an administrator I learned working in, in those kind of institutions.